Ma, ma di dov'è sto posto? Scusami, di dov'è sto posto? Cioè, dov'è? Do, dov do, che città è? Che città era sto posto? R Roma? Uh, bu, 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 bu. Eh, ma non, non... Oddio. Eh, non, non lo trovo, raga, non... Non, non lo trovo, raga, non lo trovo. Non lo trovo, mi spiace. Ho fatto un po' di ricerche si è chiuso, ma lo chef si è spostato a Roma città per fare lo chef in un risonte con ottime recensioni <ride> e fa pure lo chef privato. Ah, ha fatto carriera, beh, sono contento, dai. Grazie per il cirpatino. Beh, oh, raga, l'importante che stia bene coso. Allora, adesso vediamo un attimo. Volevo vedere... Ah, volevo vedere questo video qua, mi intratteneva un sacco. Vincere i giochi arcade con la tecnologia. Volevo troppo vedere un attimo che cos'è. This is me entering an arcade wearing just your normal everyday backpack. Only... Sembra figo, voglio vedere. Technically, it's not your normal everyday... Aspetta, ho dimenticato i decibel, vi spacco i timpani. Assordo. No, che dai, che merda! Mi sono tutti le sì, li metto, li metto. Ma should, and I win all the tickets. And that's pretty cool, but what if I told you I made similar backpacks not just for ski ball, but for this game and this one, basically coming up with contraptions. No, no, dai. For ski ball, but for this game and this one, basically c'è questo... No, zio, sei una merda, dai! Questo è il gioco che la palla da canestro entra e fa il punto. Hai messo una palla che si apre per... Coming up with contraption... Ma sei una merda! ...to absolutely dominate five of the most common arcade games, including some hacks that cost less than a dollar and actually work to set world record ticket payouts. But we also secretly recorded data from a bunch of different arcades. So I'll teach you the strategies to beat the games that give out the most tickets, along with showing you the five games we discovered are actual scams. Don't ever step foot in another arcade again until you've watched this video in its entirety. Let's get started. Controllo sempre l'audio perché... Now, admittedly, the genesis for this video came when I was using my over-engineered bull... Dai, ma sei un coglione! Perché hai la... <laughs> perché hai la palla da bullying? Che controlli tu a distanza? ball that I could control just by leaning because I thought what if I took that same concept and applied it to mini golf and while that idea could be really useful for getting a good <laughs> golf score <laughs> Amici a cena? Pizza fritta ma, con Santa Lucia Ma quanto puoi, quanto puoi barare? Scoprila su galbani.it Quanto puoi barare? There's just no real payoff for my efforts which focused my attention to the holy grail of any mini golf course, the arcade. It was time to recoup all the allowance money I've lost as a kid, starting first with ski ball. And before we really see it in action, let me first explain how it works. Uh. Because if you take away the backpack, you'll find a Frankenstein version of a softball pitching machine that we chopped up and modified so it runs just off batteries. Then there's a solenoid here that makes sure the ski balls get released one at a time. Uh. So if you just turn it Questo on... Dexter. Then... Ma senza capelli rossi. <laughs> We put a ball in here, it fires the ball like this. The coolest part here, okay. though, is when it's placed in the backpack, you roll this pocket up to reveal the ball exit, and then place this water bottle here as a clever disguise to load up to three balls at a time. Now, of course, if you don't have a secret robot backpack, here's how you win this game as a mere human. For starters, if you watch the pros play, yes, there are ski ball pros, they act non si può neanche stesso i professionisti di ski ball. Actually aim for the 4000 point hole. This actually makes sense because even if your throw is a little too weak or a little too strong, you're still getting significant points. A okay. common mistake is to take the bait and go all or nothing by aiming for the small 10000 point hole in the corner. The pros aim for this only in desperate situations where they're behind and they need big points to make a comeback for the win. The other big tip is to brace your leg against the base of the machine in the same spot each time. And then try and only move your arm, which will make your throws more repeatable and accurate because you're reducing the variables that could lead to error. So if you want to win, just follow these tips and practice a bunch. Or you could just go with my route. <laughs> Fai molta pratica, allenati. O puoi usare il mio sistema. <laughs> Dai, che merda, tutto in quella da 10.000. Che merda. So 
them when you're old? Tutti quelli da 10000. Turn dominating or if you think one of the workers might be getting suspicious, you can just pick up the backpack at any point and walk away. Vabbè, record mondiale, easy. With a bunch easy. of tickets on your card. Up next is one of my personal favorites, basketball. Eh, questo volevo vedere anche perché ho visto l'altro. In this prima. case the backpack is being used just to smuggle the special mechanism inside. Because of the untrained eye, this is just a normal basketball when in fact it's a robot. Però ragazzi, la tecnologia è bellissima. Non c'ho cazzo da fare, ragazzi, la tecnologia è bellissima. In disguise. Now before I show you exactly how it works, you first need to understand how these games work. Just underneath each rim is an infrared laser and a detector. And then on the front of the rim, on the other sì, side eh, of that metal plate is laser, a reflector. Eh. So when the laser beam shines straight forward, it bounces off the reflector and then the sensor's like, yep, I can see the beam. So sì, è come il sensore tipo quello de dei cancelli automatici dei parcheggi, che se, se ci passi con la macchina rileva. When a ball goes through the hoop, it breaks the beam and the sensor's like, aha, I didn't see it for a second. At which point it tells the game to add two points to your total, because that means you must have scored. In engineering, we call this a beam break detector, and it's the exact same concept you have as a safety feature on your garage door. So if you really want to destroy the high score here, the ball needs to break the beam, then somehow get out of the way so the beam reconnects, and then come back and break the beam again, over and over again, as fast as possible. But if you think about it, the whole ball doesn't need to actually get out of the way. Sì, a parte, a parte il fatto che sarebbe complicato creare una palla che va su e giù, cioè non abbiamo tecnologia antigravitazionale, quindi... Right. Just the part in front of the beam itself. And how might you do that? Well, one way is to 3D print the bottom hemisphere of a basketball in two parts attached together through some linear guide rods, okay. then add a battery, microcontroller, and servo motor so the bottom part of the shell can translate up and down. This way it would reconnect the beam and then break it over and over again and register two points every time that happened. Now you just need a way to grab the rim so you can hang out there while you perform these shenanigans. And if you ask, eh, ma come, come la fermi però, scusa? Some pneumatic pistons connected to a mini pressure intake controlled by a solenoid valve triggered by an RF remote. And then you could shoot the ball normally and then with one... Dai che merda! <laughs> Dai che merda! Lo blocchi con due ganci e fai beep 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 beep! <laughs> Push a button, piston rods would shoot out and grab the rim, and then once mischief was managed, <laughs> you trigger the remote again, and they would retract. Now if you just add another 3D printed hemisphere on top, then glue on the actual basketball skin, then when you put it all together, it would look something like Sembra, sembra, cioè è uguale, non capisci la differenza. This. Now if you don't happen to have a robo ball, here's a few tips that will help you get the high score for this game. Now the most important thing is you never want to waste time waiting for a ball to roll down to you. And since these games normally come in pairs, just swipe your card on both games and then temporarily borrow the second set of balls. Now this should give you plenty more than you need, so just keep the balls that are the least inflated. Now you start the game and get into a rhythm where you finish your shot with one hand and then start grabbing or replacing the ball with your other hand before your first shot has even gone in. Or if the rim is close and you want to get really extreme, you can just go with a two-handed shooting strategy like this guy. But even that strategy is no match for my spherical transformer, because when I'm ready to go, I just shoot the ball with one hand and then hit the remote right as it's about to go in. And now as the ball just sits there articulating, I simply watch those <laughs> sweet, sweet points rack themselves right on up. Look at this bloody man! Sento 4, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, 2. Guarda quanti punti! Che coglione! As soon as time's up, I just hit the remote again. And the piston rods are tracked. And while no one's the wiser, I've now injured my way to a buttload of tickets. Direi che ha fatto il record. Direi che ha fatto easy peasy il record mondiale. And a new lifetime high score. 250. <laughs> Next up is a really popular game called Quick Drop where you hit this button to release these ping pong balls at the right moment and if you get all 50 ping pong balls into the buckets within the 22 seconds allotted without missing any shots, then you hit the mega jackpot. But the thing is, to get all 50 balls in before the time runs out, there's essentially no margin for human error. Which is good news for me because robot backpacks don't make human airs. Now you notice when I walk up, I can just set the backpack down and it self registers right in place. The trick here is we 3D printed an exact negative replica of the button housing on the game. And this piston rod that pokes through and pushes the button on the game is attached to the solenoid that's controlled by this Arduino microcontroller and it tells it the exact timing needed to beat the game. Now if you're trying this on your own, here's what you need to know. To successfully do this in 22 seconds, you have to drop four balls in each bucket, except in two buckets 
points, you've got to drop five. Now dropping five into these two buckets isn't impossible, but the timing's so tight, it's really hard to pull off without them hitting the rim and bouncing out. Now the jackpot starts at 500 tickets, and every time someone loses, it goes up by two tickets, and each time that happens, the game gives you just a little more total time on the clock. And so if you ever see the jackpot at more than 625 tickets, enough time is now on the clock where you only need four balls per bucket to win, and it's definitely worth trying it a few times because that makes it so much easier to pull off. Alternatively, if you're too impatient to wait for the jackpot to rise up, you can just go to school for six years to get a degree in mechanical engineering. <laughs> Se non ti vado ad aspettare il jackpot, vai all'università a imparare ingegneria meccanica. <ride> And do it this way. Giustissimo, giustissimo. And then even as all 554 sweet, delicious tickets are being added to your account, you can just inconspicuously walk away with your backpack in tow. Bellissimo. Bellissimo. Con cosa automatico. <ride> Ma io voglio vedere quello del pugno, voglio quello del pugno che voglio vedere. No, per una bocca più sana. For our next game we've got the perennial arcade favorite. Quello che dove io baro sempre che quando gli altri tirano io metto il braccio davanti per non far entrare il coso. Air hockey. Now this is the most complicated of all the builds because if you look closely here at the top, there's a hole in the bag for a camera to look out through. Then stripping away the backpack, you can see that camera connects to the brains and in this case it's a Raspberry Pi, which is basically like a mini computer instead of just an Arduino microcontroller like all the other builds have used so far. The reason this one needs a bit more brain power is because it uses computer vision to track the puck and based off the trajectory it makes a prediction then sends instructions to rotate this servo which is attached to an arm that moves the paddle and protects the goal. And perhaps my favorite part of this build is that it obviously won't work if the whole thing is sliding and moving all around. So we need to anchor it down securely into position but we need to do that quickly and discreetly. Our solution here is a pair of neodymium toggle magnets. So if you simply turn both of these knobs the rear earth magnets move into position and anchor it to the steel frame of the air hockey table and it's basically cemented in place as you can see here. As for the human strategy here, playing air hockey might seem like total chaos, but there are four simple tricks that will pretty much guarantee you can beat any casual player. The first is to hold the paddle like this and not like this. Doing that allows you to really whip the paddle around and gain extra speed on your shots. The second is that for your default defensive position, you want your paddle to be out here, not right up against the goal right here. That's because this cuts down the angle and you only have to move the paddle back and forth this far to protect the whole goal versus back and forth this far if you're against the edge. This is the same reason goalies will come out of the goal if there's a breakaway in soccer. Even for a bang shot, you now just have to move the paddle a small distance diagonally back like this. So your paddle should essentially Beh, oh, always stay inside a triangle like this when you're playing defense. And when you watch professionals play, yes, there are air hockey professionals, you will see them no, employ no, both these first two tips. The third trick you'll also see is they try and play for possession. You want to try and cushion your opponent's shot and gain possession of the puck so you can set up your own shot which leads to the last tip. Mix up the straight shots and bank shots but try and practice at least one trick shot like this one where you hit the puck down into the corner and then when it rebounds back to you you hit the bank shot for the win. Here's what that looks like in action. Now the real benefit of my backpack system is you can be playing your opponent but then when you get a phone call or you have to attend to some other important matters your goal is in safe hands. <laughs> <laughs> and then at your own leisure, you can eventually just come back and finish things off. <laughs> then with the victory securely in hand, you just disengage the two toggle magnets with a twist and you're good to go. And finally, we've got the ultimate test of strength. The punching bag game. Now for this one, to make it more interesting, I wanted to find and challenge the guy in the arcade whose muscles look the least like mine. So I stepped up first. And rocked a 678 out of a possible 999. But then he stepped up. Deve stato a tirare un pugno in bocca ti smonta la testa. And rocked an 877. And since that's bigger than 678, the trash talking commenced. Ciao Andre. In questi giorni sono molto in ansia perché eh? ho fatto le prove in valsi per l'esame che avrò a giugno. Sono molto nervosa. Scusate per Valentina. il messaggio lungo papere, vi voglio bene e ti voglio bene, Andre Cuore Andrà tutto Rosso. bene, Valentina, tranquilla, non ti preoccupare, non stare in ansia, Andrea che va tutto bene. Grazie per il cheer. Baby, if you spend a little less time at the computer, a little more time in the weight room. 
So that was the non abbiamo bisogno della forza fisica se abbiamo il cervello. Disappointing, but lucky for me, I had a trick up my sleeve. Like, actually, because that's a fake arm in order to disguise this. Ma che senso cosa? Sono ancora un po' inadeguato. It's basically a bionic punching arm powered by two spring loaded pistons. To set the springs, we use a threaded rod and a drill, and once under tension, they're held in place with a quick release mechanism. Ma non è un po' troppo un pistone. I can trigger with my finger at the exact moment I want to punch a thing. Non è un po' tanto un pistone per dare un pugno. Se... And I would classify the initial test in the lab as... Eh, non... <ride> Mi sembra un tantino tanto, cioè, mio Dio, un pistone, se... Encouraging. Now, it's important to... Cioè, questo altro che tira pugni, questo ti sfonda il... <ride> sì, questo non è la lama celata, questo è un pistone celato. Questo ti smonta, ti, ti disgrega la mandibola. No, to play by the rules for this game, there's no side punching, pushing, running, kicking, or headbutting. But you'll notice there's no rule against spring-loaded piston punching gloves. So now that my moment of sheer domination had arrived, I stepped up... Mera che sberla che tira... And rocked in 838, which was less than 870. Ecco, comunque meno, ma hai aumentato di parecchio. 7, which was disappointing. Dang it! And in hindsight, I should have known. Devi mirare meglio. It's really hard to compete with the human body in terms of things like punching and throwing. Devi mirare meglio. Because we're just so efficient with those mechanics. And I have to sacrifice a lot of the speed and momentum of my own arm body system when I'm wearing that heavy wrist mount. È vero, vedete me che piano. But you know what? I'm a fighter. And what I lack in muscle mass, I make up for in tenacity. So out of curiosity, I took a closer look to see how the machine actually works. And it turns out it has a beam brake sensor just like the basketball game. So as that odd shaped metal piece which is attached to the axle and punching bag rotates around, the beam has this tiny window to hit the sensor. You can see the sensor in the front view here. So the game cleverly measures how many milliseconds the sensor sees the beam for, and from that it infers how quickly the bag is rotating on the axle and therefore how hard it works. Beh, sì, è ovvio, quella roba lì non è che misura veramente la forza, misura solo la velocità con cui viene tirata all'indietro sì. non sapevo funzionasse così molto figo molto figo non sapevo funzionasse così sapevo che non misurava effettivamente la forza ma sapevo che misurava più che altro la velocità ma non sapevo funzionasse così molto figo gave me an idea so I went to the prize counter and redeemed a few of my jackpot tickets I'd been stocking up in exchange for a Pez dispenser step one was to unwrap and eat some of the Pez because they're just delicious and then for step two I removed the head and cut the arcade card like this and then taped it here and then went and tracked down my new friend. My theory was that if I extended the Pez dispenser and modified card out like this and then let go, the force of the spring would <laughs> retract the card and it would break the beam so fast the machine would think it was an insanely fast punch. But would it actually work? And it turns out It absolutely does because I know. Eh, vabbè, ma Scusa, hai modificato il meccanismo. <laughs> Zidio. Text out the machine. So, uh, yeah. Use this information responsibly, kids. Now, a few years ago... Puoi fare il tamarro con le fidanzate. Puoi fare il tamarro con le ragazze. Vai lì, lo modifichi prima. Fai, baby, vuoi dare la mia potenza? Bam! Fai, fai così. Fai proprio, fai proprio il tamarro. Ti metti lì e fai... Ting! 999! <laughs> I made a video where I visited the carnival and tipo collected data on all the games Ball. and then used physics to expose which carnival games were rigged and then showed how to beat them. So this time around, instead of the carnival, I once again bribed some family friends with unlimited Slurpees in exchange for them collecting a bunch of data at some local arcades. And in addition to uncovering which games were scams, which I'll cover in just a minute, here's what we discovered. For starters, the most popular games in the arcade were the Redemption games, as opposed to the Experience games. And here's what I mean by that. Redemption games are the games where the The goal is to win tickets. Eh? So like the coin pushers or this Plinko game or eh? spin the wheel. On the other end of the spectrum, you have experience games like air hockey, ski ball or racing games. It's a trade-off because the games on this side of the spectrum give out more tickets, but it's not as much about the fun of the experience. And then in the middle of the spectrum, you have games like the ping pong drop or hit the clown that have middle of the road tickets. Oh, gancho. Quello del io, io quello del gancio dei pupazzi, io sono un incubo. A me quando mi vedono oramai a Gavicex, quando vado in vacanza, che mi vedono entrare in sala giochi, che mi vedono andare al coso dei pupazzi, cominciano già a sudare e a piangere, perché sanno che io li prendo. Io gli ho svuotato la bacheca a quella di Gavicex, ho preso tipo una guarda di... Ma perché? Io, quel... io, io vado specialmente in quelle grandi, non vado tanto in quelle piccole, vado in quelle grandi. Vabbè, non so se avete presente, quelle col gancio, quello grosso, quello col gancio grosso. 
perché non me ne hai preso uno? Perché sei mia sorella e non devo fare nulla per impressionarti, quindi che cazzo va? No, però, allora, praticamente il gancio è... Pro... <ride> il gancio è programmato per tirare su solamente una volta ogni tot. Quindi o vai a culo oppure ti fai una sorta di calcolo di più o meno quante volte una persona mette prima di riuscire a mettere, prima di riuscire a prendere. Il problema è che tu non lo, non lo sai, quindi o stai lì un attimo ad aspettare e vedere quanti soldi mette la gente, oppure provi ad andare a caso, però provi ad aspettare che qualcuno metta un po'. E questa cosa no, è, è casuale, ogni tot euro, ogni tot euro che metti il gancio prende. E io lo so che è così, io lo so che è così, perché una volta il gancio mi aveva tirato su un peluche lo stava portando verso sinistra però il peluche tipo si è incartato si è bloccato ed è ricaduto giù allora io al tipo della cassa gli ho detto guarda che mi si è bloccato il peluche ma l'avevo tirato su e lui mi ha fatto rifare il, il tiro precedente ha resettato il tiro precedente che avevo fatto io per farmelo rifare e io l'ho ritirato su quel coso quindi quello lì funziona che ogni tot euro che ci metti uno ti tira sul pupazzo però voglio dire non è facile devi andare lì con un po' di soldi in euro se no non li prendi su però non ne prendo veramente un sacco quando vado payouts, but they're also middle of the road fun to play now since the games on this voglio dire tanto, tanto per dire eh, non per dire ma Questi sono solo due delle mie conquiste. <ride> Questi sono solo due delle mie conquiste. In quei cosi lì che li ho tenuti io. <ride> sono i miei pupazzoni. Me li tengo io. Sono tutti miei. Vaffanculo. Sono tutti miei. No, sono tutti miei, i peluche sono miei, a me piacciono i peluche. A me piacciono un sacco i peluche, sono tutti miei quelli. <ride> Poi alcuni sono anche in casa di Naomi perché non mi ci stanno. Quanti? Pff, non lo so. Adesso fai conto che non è che li prendo sempre, però ne ho presi parecchi, voglio dire, di peluscioni grandi. Side were a lot more popular, they earn a lot more money for the arcade, even when you factor in the higher ticket payouts. We found that for a medium sized arcade on a busy day, the less. Ho fatto finta di regalarli alla Naomi, a Naomi, ma in realtà sono tutti miei. Faccio finta che siano suoi, ma in realtà sono miei. Popular games were played 25 times, and the more popular ones could be played up. Eh, lascia perdere, Sebi, lascia perdere, che adesso dobbiamo recuperare anche quelle sub, altro che, altro che soldi per. A già perdere free web grazie per i 7 ma ti metto la web per armata grazie per i sub adesso devo abbassare un attimo il gol delle sub della maratona che dobbiamo recuperare che tra poco ci avrò il butto da pagare altro che peluche quello era un cornicattolo <ride> To 250 times or more. At an average gameplay of one dollar, that means each game makes 25 to 250 dollars per day, or about 7 to 70,000 dollars per year. And finally, we found that if your sole goal was to win tickets, coin pusher games like this Avengers one seem to be the best return on investment. But honestly, you can just ask one of the workers there who are hanging out making minimum wage and are probably pretty chill, because chances are they'll just tell you which ones they regularly see pay out the best. Alright, so finally, Let's get to the real juicy part and talk about which games we discovered were basically scams. Now, I actually have some experience in this area because a few years back, I built my original backpack arcade robot to dominate this game. Basically, it would sense Sorry? the light turning on a few lights in front of the jackpot light, then it would hit the button with sub millisecond precision, and then we would touch nothing in between runs, and yet it would alternate say, say between missing merda. both short and long. In other words, the timing on the jackpot light doesn't match up with the duration it's lit, and it's very different from all the other lights. You can actually test this yourself by picking a random light and you'll find miraculously you could somehow hit that random light every single time you try. Now this caused me to dig a little deeper and after a bit of research I was able to locate a copy of the owner's manual at which point I discovered the arcade owner could just manually set how often a jackpot should be won. 
So this time around, I was curious what other games were essentially running the same scam where you think it's a game of skill, but in reality, the arcade owner is controlling when a jackpot's won. And as it turns out, this really... Vabbè, ma questa è la parte, questa è la parte più, come si dice, la parte un attivino più noiosa. Io volevo vedere quello iniziale, quello iniziale era veramente figo. Allora, papere, vediamo un attimo, vediamo un attimo cosa possiamo vedere. Dunque, 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 dunque. Mm, vediamo un attimo un po'. Ma sì, vediamoci il riassuntazzo di Xina che dura 15 minuti ci sta. Buona gli salva la vita. Mo, vattene a casa mo. E la puntata finisce con Olimpia che le si è attaccata le gambe peggio di un polpo allo scoglio. <ride> e alla fine Xina cede e la rende sua sguattera. <ride> Toh, inizia a lavare questo. E mi raccomando, occhio ai tarzanelli. È felice di avere un paio di mutande di pelliccia pulite dopo qualcosa tipo 5 anni di sudate lordure varie. L'indomani Xina e la sua nuova sguattera si rimettono in viaggio, pronte ad affrontare una lunga serie di avventure fra intendimenti di natura sessuale. E questo era il primo episodio di Xina la principessa che mena. Figo. E fa caldissimo. Ma cosa mi impara? Eh, colpa di Xina. Momento papere che vado un secondo al Walter. Chiedo scusa.